Okay, it's time. We're gonna do a video about putting windows in. We're installing these windows. They're Anderson Fibrex 100 series. They're new construction windows. That means they have a flange that mounts on the outside of the wall sheeting instead of screwing through the sides of your studs like a remodel window does. Okay, this window is some kind of weird material called Fibrex. It's not vinyl, it's not wood. This stuff is made out of the same stuff as Trex decking and it's extruded. So it's like a combination of wood and plastic, then it's extruded, that's all it is, Fibrex. I think they're a good product for the price. They're not super expensive, uh, but they seem to perform pretty well. All right, let's look at this window here. It's got a flange that mounts on the outside of the wall sheeting. That's the wall sheeting and it's got nail holes in it. We put a nail in every single hole and that will hold it tight to the house, keep it from coming out. So I'm gonna tell you a few things that I think every window manufacturer will tell you for every single kind of window. Um, if you're gonna put in some windows, do read the specific manual for that window because things do vary a little. But we're gonna go over some things that pretty much any window, new construction, you're gonna wanna do to get it done right. is I always check the width of the window, the height of the window, and then I check the width of the window opening and the height of the window opening and make sure it's gonna fit before I put the caulk on the house. And that way I don't make a big mess if I have to change something. And what you'll notice if you could see really good is that the window opening is actually a half inch bigger in each direction than the window, which is what it's supposed to be. That way the window fits in there and has like a quarter inch gap all the way around, including the bottom. So this is a great tip here. Don't set the window all the way down on the sill. Shim it up and I actually use construction pencils. I don't have a single one on me. They're probably stuck in a window out there. Um, that's a great quarter inch shim to set underneath the window to jack it up to keep the window from sitting on the actual sill. And most manufacturers recommend doing that. All right, number two, check that the sides of your opening are plumb and that the top and the bottom are level. Now this level is a little too long for uh, this opening, but I can kind of angle it and make it work. And we look good there again. Next step. Okay, number three is check the window opening diagonals to make sure that the opening is square. Now, if all the sides are plumb and level, it shouldn't be skewed, but it's always a good idea to just check this anyway. So what I'm gonna do is check both diagonals and just make sure that they're the same number. It doesn't really matter what the number is. As long as they're the same, the window opening is square. Putting windows in a wall. <laughs> All right, number four. <laughs> Most window manufacturers are gonna recommend that you seal the window sill with something, uh, a pan flashing or a sill flashing, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, on this house, we've used zip tape, which is a flashing tape, and we've basically made a solid layer of this stuff over top of the sill that wraps around and makes a solid corner right here. There's no little pinhole in the corner because this tape is stretchy. You can kind of stretch it out around the corner. Usually you want it to come up about six inches from the bottom of the sill. And we'll go ahead and wrap this all the way in before we're finished. We can get to that from the inside actually. So that's called your sill flashing or your pan flashing. That way if water somehow does get in here, which it won't if you do everything else right, it won't rot the window sill. That's a good thing to do. And almost every window manufacturer is gonna say, definitely do that. Putting windows in the wall. <laughs> okay, number five. Most houses by code nowadays have to have a house wrap or Tyvek or builder's wrap, whatever you want to call it. It's a layer of this semi-permeable plastic that goes over your house, uh, moisture barrier, maybe you'd call it. Um, and so this flange is going to attach to the outside of that moisture barrier here. But on the top of the window, we want the connection to actually be to the sheeting underneath. So that if water gets on this, it will run on top of the flange on top. So what we do is cut a 45 degree angle on both sides, flip that up, tack it with some tape while we install the window. And then we flip it back down over top of the flange on the top of the window. Almost every window manufacturer is gonna recommend that you do that. All right, number six, I think we're gonna use caulk behind the flanges on this window. And we're gonna put this one in using the drainage method. And that means that we're gonna caulk the sides, the top, but not the bottom. In case water were to somehow get in there on the sill, it would have a place to run out, which would be the bottom. Now you can caulk all the way around and then flash tape all the way around. And that's another method to do it. But I like the drainage method. It seems like it makes sense to give a place for the water to go 
uh, besides in your house. So this will let it get out or dry. I'm gonna do like a quarter inch thick bead of caulk around here is what most window manufacturers are gonna recommend behind the flange. If you put much more than that, it's gonna squeeze out and get everywhere. So let's do that. That's about a quarter or half inch in from the rough opening. It's a good spot to put that. Hey, we need some pencils to put in here. The flanges will break if you set them just on the flange on this particular type of window. So we leave them in this packaging material until we're ready to install them. That way it doesn't get cracked or broken. Uh, lock the window before you install it. So take out the packing materials. These Anderson windows have crazy packing materials. We almost couldn't get it unpacked on the first one. So in order to make sure your window stays squared up while you're installing it, lock it. And these lock automatically, which is pretty cool. Um, and then after you install your window, Check that it operates. If it doesn't operate, you did something wrong. Yeah. Okay, I think we're on number seven now already. Uh, I think that's the point where we actually install the window, okay? On a small window, I'll usually lift it myself and then I'll have another man, AJ. Hello. Uh, on the inside, and what he's gonna do is make sure the window is centered in the opening from side to side. And then on the outside, I'm gonna check it with a level again to make sure it's plumb and it's level and it's centered in the opening and it's shimmed off the bottom of the opening with those pencils. And then I'm gonna start nailing it. Okay, here we go. Woo. All right, usually set the bottom of the window into the opening first. Up, up, up. At an angle. To your right. He'll guide me in. Okay, now that it's resting on the pencils, we'll tip it in. And he's gonna move it side to side till it's centered. How are we looking? He can't hear me. <laughs> okay, now that he's holding it, we will check the window. Plum, and we're also checking that this edge is straight. Some windows, the flange actually bows and you have to pull it out straight and then tack it. So that's good. We'll check this side. More like a straight edge now. We already know that it's plumb, and we'll just for fun, we'll check the bottom. And that's running good as well. We'll start tacking it off. All right, let's talk about these nails. Number eight. What I'm attaching with is a two inch electro galvanized roofing nail. And why I like these nails is because they have a super thin head. Whatever you nail with is going to be underneath of your window trim. So if you use a fat, thick head on your nail, it's gonna make your window trim tip more than it already is going to. And we actually shim behind the window trims out here to make up for the little bit of difference of this flange. So I like using thin nails. They need to be two inch so they get into the wood framing an inch and a half. And <laughs> if you're not comfortable swinging a hammer, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but we're gonna nail really close to this window. So I choke way up on the hammer. I'm gonna look like a total sissy right here. Um, but that's what I do is I choke up so that I don't smack this window and put a hole in it. All right, here's a great tip for nailing these. If you're gonna be in close to a window like this is to swing with your wrist, not your whole arm. That'll keep the fulcrum of the swing in the same spot, putting the head of your hammer in the same spot every time. If you move your whole arm, you're more likely to get off skew and smack right there. Attack all four corners. Okay, I've got all four corners tacked. Now I'm gonna go around the whole perimeter, nail in every single nail. This is gonna take a few minutes. Uh, maybe you can video it and we'll do it in fast motion. That'll be fun. Okay, I've seen people do this with coil nailers before. That's like a roofing nailer that shoots the same type of nail. Only problem is if it's cold like it is right now, this frame is a little brittle. When you shoot them into that flange, the flange will like crack and explode, break all the pieces if you have the pressure set too high. If you have the pressure set too low, it won't shoot it all the way in, then you gotta smack it with a hammer anyway. So I don't mind to just hand nail them. It takes a little longer, but you know you're not gonna blow the flange all to pieces. 
and it'll stay in the window opening. So that's good. Okay, number eight or nine, Daryl says it's nine. So let's do that. We're gonna flash tape the side flanges first, then the top. That's the way shingles would lap, and that's how we're gonna do the flashing. So we'll start with the sides. We'll start with them, do them on top of the house wrap. Gonna let it stick up about three inches, and then down about three inches. And I'm just really making sure that it's sealed really well. Got a nice pocket knife out of thin air. <laughs> All right, there's one side. And let's get the other. It's good if it's smooth, no wrinkles. If you get a little wrinkle, can be okay. <laughs> but it's better if it has none. All right, now we're gonna do the top. Okay, we're gonna attach this right to the wall sheeting behind the builder's wrap. Uh-oh, let's get it right side up. Let's get this right. Yeah, there you go. Okay, I'm good there. Okay. Number 10, so there's 10 steps. That's how many there is. Number 10, we're gonna flip down this flap and then we're gonna attack it with some tape over top of this piece of window flashing. Oh, that's some good tape, holy cow. All right. Man, that stuff is so sticky. Okay, now that that's flipped down, the water will stay on the outside of the flashing and house wrap as it goes around the window, even if it gets behind the siding, which we're gonna put the siding on ourselves. So I'm pretty confident that when we install it, no water is gonna get behind the siding. But if it did, it would protect the house and the wood layers of the house, get the water all the way to the ground without rotting the house. So 10 steps putting in a window typically now, like I said, read your instructions because there may be many more steps if you're installing like wood windows or super, super expensive windows with super good warranties. And if you skip those steps, you could void your warranties. Word of the wise, read all the fine print on your paperwork with your windows. All right, a couple final notes here. We leave this plastic film on the windows until the house is done so that stuff doesn't get on the windows like paint or dust or get scratched. Number two is after the windows are installed, this company recommends shimming, permanent shims around the inside of the frame to the framing. And number three is you wanna seal the entire perimeter around the inside with expanding foam, uh, low expansion foam, or you can use backer rod and caulk so that the entire perimeter is sealed for insulation and uh, air movement. Hey, thanks for watching our video today. I hope it was helpful to you and I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe to our channel and click the bell. You'll get our future videos where we put more windows in the wall. See ya.